Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I'm just here for the tentacles. Do I want to ask more, or should I just carry on? I carry on my wayward son. You will know soon enough. Oh, God, no. Any who also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. Does anyone have a bottle? Because the baby's about to start crying again. Hmm. All right, um, two different um, intros, but anywho, <laughs> in today's episode, we are going to review uh, issue 98 of Friendship with Magic, the comic book, uh, also known as season 10, episode 10. Uh, in this issue, Princess Celestia and Princess Luna confront their fears and come face to face with a giant creature when a painting brings up memories of their past. So, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Uh, this was the last hurrah for Celestia and Luna, so to speak. Hmm. I mean, this was their grand farewell. And it's a very odd adventure. I, there are elements I like. There are uh, ways the story is told, both visually and in words, that I find clever. But overall... This just isn't the story to end on for so too too prominent a pair of uh, a set of ponies. They basically, I feel like it's a, something of a disservice. So I come away feeling just a little empty, a little uh, disappointed. Hmm. I, I see. I mean, when reading this issue, I felt like this was just another slice of life story, but. Now that you mentioned that this is their last hurrah, it feels like they could have gone more... How do I put this? The word I'm looking for is Andy Price. Like, put in more action, adventure, comedy. Uh, just put more mm and cool. <clears throat> but anywho, Jacob, what about you? Well, um... I'm on the fence of actually on the fence of actually saying that in terms of writing and art, this is on the line of Friends Forever in Forever Number One. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I say that because both writer and artist uh, have never ah. worked on MLP comics before, uh, and it shows. One thing that doesn't this doesn't push it in the territory is the art, since at least this one doesn't make my eyes hurt. But still. There's some really questionable moments that makes you wonder what the artist was doing in thinking when he was doing the visuals. Like, okay, uh, this is another thing. Uh, the writer for this issue is uh, Celeste Bronfman, and actually, did, and she did have an interview with uh, Equestria Daily some time ago, and apparently, she's a writer for a high school teen drama called the De Grassi. De Grassi? How do you spell that, Silver? D E G R A S S I. Degrassi sounds about right. Okay, yeah, and there she also did some adult ch uh, children shows, and uh, while well, she she's not uh, written, uh, she, hold on, <clears throat> well, she's not writing the comics for the first time. What she used to do was write uh, one-page stories for Rivers of London graphic novels, where. There will have to be a story with a plot twist in uh, five panel strips. Uh, how she got into the MLP co uh, comics was that apparently a few years ago she got some issues from a friend of hers who apparently wrote a few comics, though she mm. never mentions them, the writer by name, but that's how she, how she got into it. Uh, as for the content of this comic, she seems to have liked the World Problem episode and she wanted to see more of Celestia and Luna that way. Although, <laughs> I wonder if she wanted to write the story more because uh, her name's two letters away from Princess Sambat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but unfortunately it's all the worst because I was going high for this comic when I, it was first announced and I was hoping that we, that we might see more in-depth look of the past of the immortal alicorn princesses. But unfortunately, it ended up being rather disappointing for me. And uh, yeah. here's another interesting thing. Uh, apparently, she also worked on the first story arc for G5 comics, the ones that mm -hmm. are assigned to come out now. 
So, if the writing for this issue is anything to go on what she has in store for the first installment of the new comics, I'm not being very optimistic. Ah, but that's being a bit too judgy because this is something that we already know and G5 is something new. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Just have to wait and see. Yeah, I know. Just, just say. As for me... I kind of like this comic. Um, it was it it was interesting to see that Celestial was carrying a lot of baggage. You 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 can say that she has PTSD, and how she dealt with it was interesting. And yeah, not going to spoilers or anything, but <laughs> um, this would be very interesting as a TV show. But anywho, um, if you guys have not watched this comic, if you guys have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the comic with well, our heroes, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, uh, bringing an old painting of Celestia and Luna to their new home in Maritime. Main, uh, what was it, Silva? Could you read that? Maritime Manor. Maritime Manor. Hmm, okay, Maritime, Maritime Manor. Where was the... Maybe, Sorry? That'd be funny. What if Celestia and Luna are the founders of Maritime Bay? Oh, God. It, that, this is the first um, problem that, that I have. I have this Maritime Bay is in the setting of G5 series. Like, uh, <sighs> this brings up so many problems, but also this seems to be uh, the problem on the writer's part because... When we last saw uh, Celestia and Luna in the series, in the last problem, and they said goodbye to Twilight, they said that they were looking for Silver Shoals, not Maritime Bay. Oh, so, well, for all we know, for all we know, Maritime Manor is just the building in Silver Shoals. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was thinking. So it could be that because the what you call this? Mm, uh, how do I put this? Um, how to put this? Um, to for them to suddenly move to Maritime Manor, if it's a different location, feels like why is Silver Shores that bad? Or you know, honestly speaking, uh, Silver Shores could be uh, the new Maritime Bay. Uh, the the time gap was like a huge gap, really. Or the writer just made a noobsy. Yeah, oh, that that too, but anywho, uh, the heroes bring uh, the portrait to Luna. Luna saying, "Oh wow, this brings back really good memories," and uh, I'm sure Celestia would uh, love uh, love it. It would be a good surprise for her. And Rainbow Dash here is just freaking out because of the um, drawing. It's like the dolls; they're looking at her. Always looking. But anywho, uh, Celestia pops in and she sheds a tear and the rest of the gang are like confused. Wait, why? And Celestia tells the story about how when they were young, they were attacked by a, whatchamacallit, this creature of the sea where... <clears throat> They, yeah, they were they were attacked by a creature of the sea when they were at sea with Star Soul the Bearded doing classes, and the the other thing is that they're supposed to take care of a doll and keep it safe. <clears throat> so uh, they they are on the boat, they bicker a bit, and suddenly every pony is gone, and. Suddenly, a kraken appears and grabs the ponies. And oh no! Um, just grab the ponies, and they somehow um, fainted and end up at shore. And that's how they lost their dolls. And Celestia is all emo-like because of that incident. And. I'm just trying to remember back again. And 
uh, Twilight, sorry, um, for Rosa Shai just says, um, it wasn't luck. Uh, she just says, the Kraken I've met are very peaceful creatures. They have the sweetest uh, sing-song voice, love to dance, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, Fluttershy sees the Kraken as a positive thing, while Celestia is not. She she doesn't believe Fluttershy and wants to, well, uh, rip her apart. Um, Fluttershy somehow feels like she said something not correct and kind of doubts herself. And Rainbow Dash says, I don't get upset. She's just moody. And uh, Luna has a plan to, well, clear things up. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. we got a, got a lot of things to go through here. Art-wise, uh, character reactions are very extreme, like... When Celestia says, I love a good surprise, or Rainbow uh, is asking, do you really love it? Which, for some reason, puts me in the mind of uh, Peacemaker. Do you really want, do you really, really want it? <laughs> look, but look at how stretched their mouths are. As this, this artist goes for, uh, for very extreme angles. Akeem S. Roberts. And uh, so it's very noteworthy. We get the return of the Squabbling Sisters, especially Bratty Celestia, hmm. which I've always found funny. And then there's the Kraken. Release the Kraken. <laughs> now, visually, there are hints of what's to come, but. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <coughs> But the Kraken is all very close-up shots where it's filling almost the entire frame. You you never get a chance to step back and see the whole creature. But then at the very, after Celestia has told her story, and Rainbow's face is giving me nightmares. <laughs> that one. Mm -hmm. The way where she's flying upside down. I mean, my gosh. Those eyes. I mean, she's complaining about the painting follow those eyes. With its eyes. Uh, her eyes are going to follow me into my dreams and beyond. They stare into my soul. Oh, no. But the... Uh, honestly, yes, I do think Fluttershy made a mistake. Uh, she's making a very... She's making an assertion based on her experiences... And, well, you just got, sometimes you got to leave the door open that, hey, maybe your experience is not universal. So Celestia may still be very valid. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that it's not Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash who go to clarify things with this here Kraken. That's true. I was, I was thinking about all of, all of them going, and at the same time, too, uh, it's foreshadowing of what is to come. So yeah, I feel. I guess part of me is also sad that Fluttershy, eh, she stumbled. She made a slight boo boo, but she isn't given the opportunity to change or make up for the mistake. All right, all right. Jacob, what about you? Well, I'm gonna skip the whole G five thing. It's uh, we already entered that. Uh, anyway, ah. You just can't <coughs> help but say that when you see the picture of Celestia and Luna with kids. And I do wonder how they got the pair of hyperactive little kids to stand still for hours for the, the artist painting the portrait. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. You just do a time stop spell around them and then they won't move for hours. <laughs> On the Royal Sisters, treason. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's Starswell that did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I do have to agree with Rainbow Dash that when we see the close-up of the dolls on the later panels, they really are really creepy. <laughs> but Stars World, oh, Stars World, you had one job and you decided to teleport other passengers and yourself off the ship, but you forgot the most important kids in the kingdom and let them be safe. If, uh, excuse me, I mean taken by the sea monster. Uh, on the serious note, though, 
the art here really isn't showing what actually happened um, because everybody just disappeared. But in the, in the, in the interview, when it's asked uh, why Star's World didn't stop the Kraken, she basically says Star's World could have taken care of the Kraken by himself, but he got caught off guard, off guard and the Kraken got him. However, the way the art uh, shows it here, it just... Uh, I don't know, it just makes it look as if Star's World just teleported away and left the sisters behind instead of picking them, instead of picking them up. Sounds like, about right. <laughs> <laughs> the artists really didn't do a good, good translation of the events, unfortunately, because even showing a frame of the tentacle popping up uh, on the panel and just going yoink would have helped a lot on what's happening. Uh, true, true, but at the same time too, uh, what's happening is is a flashback, where it's Celestia retelling her memories of certain events. And um, so, what was what kind of story is this? The unreliable narrator, something like that. Ah, uh, yes, it, it, well, it is unreliable. Is it Celestia telling the, the thing, telling the story with the thing in the place? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is one of those scenarios where yes, uh. Things are happening. Uh, Starsoul could have blah blah blah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is from the point of view of Celestia. Uh, Celestia is telling a story of how that fateful day our dolls were lost to sea, and it was the Kraken's fault. Grr. Although I find it interesting, you talk you talk about seeing just a, li a little bit of a tentacle on screen. Are you saying just the tip? <laughs> Oh <sighs> boy! Anywho, <clears throat> yeah, but seriously, oh, come on. seriously, does somebody needs to get the dash of sugar because she looks more high than Pinkie Pie? Mm, I don't see problem there. But anywho, <laughs> carrying on. Whew. Um, Luna says, uh, "All good suggestions, but there's only one thing that will cheer my sister up right now, and that's to kill her." <laughs> Yay! Let's go get our dolls back by putting on this uh, scuba diving gear that's been recently invented. Yay! And uh, Luna just says, why don't we just go back to sea? Maybe the Kraken's gone and we can get back our dolls and so on. And Celestia just says, what if the Kraken just comes up to us and so on, blah blah blah. And, so on. and they, they banter for a bit. Uh, Luna's just saying, uh, come on, sis, let's just go. And Celestia's saying, no, we shouldn't because the, um, what you call this, Kraken might be there and so on. And, haha, Princess Luna here devises a plan of, how about I do reverse psychology on you? And it works on Giraffe Luna. <laughs> and, Yay! Uh, they go back to the Crystal Seas where they lost their dolls. So they go scuba diving, or I won't say scuba diving, but they're, they're diving, they're diving. And they look around the Sea of Equestria. Uh, they, it, it's pretty because uh, sea life and all. And they found their shipwreck where uh, that fateful day happened. Uh, Celestia trying to scrunch up some magic, but she can't really do any because she's stressed right now. She's stressed that she's stressed in the moment, and her magic is not working properly. Um, it seems that Celestia is in a panic now, or she's yeah she's she's panicking because um <clears throat> sorry she, she she's panicking right now because. Um, she she couldn't stop thinking about that day and couldn't help but well just do things differently uh, she says she can't stop uh, picturing that day how the cracker broke our ship in half and so on blah 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 and Luna is just like she broke our ship in half we couldn't breathe like there, there's two uh at this point, you can feel like, wait, what? What's going on here? Like, uh, Celestia says the ship is broken in half, but Luna doesn't remember or doesn't think that. So, 
what's happening here? Could Luna be misremembering things or so on? And uh, Celestia just uh, mentions, and the pain of watching Celestia doll fall into the sea, uh, into sorry, uh, fall into that Kraken's deadly whirlpool. And Luna points out that, hey, um, whirlpool, you mean like that one over there? Oh no, uh, it seems that the whirlpool is emerging and the Kraken is there. Oh no, so the Kraken grabs the sisters and whooshes into well she just swoosh through the uh, whirlpool and put them safely back to sea or land or oh, sure yes sure um luna says she's okay and she asks why are we okay and <laughs> um celestia in a fit of rage uh, calls back the Kraken, wanting to start a fight, and whatever it is. And um, she got spooked, and the Kraken returns the Celestia doll to her. And I'm going to pause here because I think I'm close to the end. So, Jacob, what do you think? Whoa, Celeste, watch the language, please. We can't have words like death, kill, or murder in children's media. Although we can still allude to it, like Cal Chrysalis splattered the fuzzy little creature in the first arc of the series. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but okay, uh, it's time for us to talk about the main problem with this issue. In the interview, the writer said that she wanted to explore Celestia when she was no longer carrying the facade of being a composed leader and the voice of reason. Which is not true, as we've seen Celestia when she was acting like anything but a god queen. And we've seen, we've seen it happen in the Royal Problem and later in between light, uh, Dark and Dawn. But I think the major problem here is that Celestia is apparently so traumatized by this experience that just by reminding her of what happened, it, she was reduced to a bedridden emotional wreck. Now, Considering that Celestia is over 1,111 years old and all that we know she's gone through in her immortal life, all the pain and tragedy she had to endure, like from being forced to lock away her sister in the moon for a thousand years to watching her the friend she's met along the way die of old age and all the other students pre uh, was a Sunset Shimmer that she has failed and who knows what else. And the fact that this event is far worse there than anything else she's experienced, this comment makes her... Uh, well, wait, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Sira, what's the word uh, to describe something being uh, written as if it were a child? Infantilized or something? Uh, yes, infantilized. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Celestia is basically being infantilized here. That's one of the biggest issues that I have with this. Hmm. All right. All right. Um... Yeah. But uh, if we continue on, uh, I got a confession to make. I don't like the thought of deep sea dying because of the constant dread of staying into the near empty void. And yeah. having the constant foreboding feeling of something <laughs> lurking in the dark depths of the cold dark abyss. Yeah, like the sharks and giant dumb. squids. And you, well, can blame, no. <laughs> you can blame the Joss and 20,000 leagues under the sea for that, nothing else. Oh no, man. Like, I, I totally agree with you on that aspect because uh, we know more about space than we know about the sea. So yeah. Anywho, Silver, what about you? Hold on, I still oh. uh, do have one more, a uh, few more bits. Um, okay. Well, after we finally get the shot of uh, Luna and Celestia going uh, diving, I'm looking at the picture and going, Holy crap, what's wrong with their legs? Did they turn into sealers or something? I mean, look at them. The, the way the, fli the flippers on those diving suits look, like it looks like their hooves, hooves have been squished completely into flippers. I mean, they're using uh, boots or something like that. Looks like it. I mean, there's a panel where Luna takes it off. Oh, Luna takes it off. Yeah. 
<laughs> Silver's favorite topic. <laughs> Yeah. But I do, uh, d- the idea that Celestia is unable to use magic while she's stressed, um, I can't really buy it since we've seen both Celestia and Lua stressed out in the series and they could use magic normally, so, I don't know. Uh, anything more? Yeah, this is it. Alright, I'm gonna move on to Silver, and Silver, what do you think? Well, let's start with the the diving, because, all right, I think the artist did a really good job with the coral and the sea creatures and also setting the mood <clears throat> dark with just a little bit of light around Celestia and Luna. I do regret, however, that they're wearing these gray monotone uh, diving suits when the cover, B cover, shows these magnificent personalized swimming suits. Feels like a bit of a loss there. Hmm. Uh, I don't see it because it's not appearing for me. God dang it. Well, I'll see what I can do to, to find. But also, even as they swim, it looks more like they're walking. It's the walking animatic for uh, a horse. <laughs> and granted, uh, there's not a lot of references for horses scuba diving. <laughs> That's also true. It, it, if there are, I genuinely want to know where the hell that came from. Uh, but sadly, there is no... Uh, there's just no sense that they're actually swimming. It's just that they're doing a brisk jog through the ocean. Huh. This is how they retire. They do power walking through through the uh, through the ocean. Now, I do like some of the expressions on Celestia she's remembering and panicking. I agree that she's being infantilized, but if someone were to argue, well, this was a tragedy in their childhood, and childhood tragedy influences you differently than others, I could buy that, but she also has had, as you say, a thousand plus years to deal with that. And so, yeah, this whole... This whole panic attack just seems less than Celestia should be able to handle. It, it, it sounds almost a trivial matter at this point. And then we get the reveal of the Kraken. Oh, no. Oh, but I almost forget. We I, I could also make this highly... Uh, I could You could make this highly inappropriate... Oh, the Kraken gripping the ship in its strong, pulsing tentacles <laughs> Silver to stop. tore it in no. twain. No. Uh, could you at least do it like, um, you've got Godfrey, yeah. It squeezed us tight in its grasp. <laughs> I could barely breathe. My entire world just shrank to the power of this being before me. Oh, God. I... <laughs> This is where my sinus infection might actually be a benefit. Oh, no. uh, oh rest in peace, Gilbert, I, but I will always love your voice. Yeah. And your, and your reading of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> it held us tight in its strong embrace. Oh, God. <laughs> I had never known such vulnerability in my life. I need to ask, is that, is that, in, like, did he read the whole thing or was it that segment only? Uh, you know, I've never had the endurance to find out <laughs> One can only stand Fifty Shades of Grey so much. Oh, not Gilbert Godfrey, all right. <laughs> Jesus, no. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with Gilbert Godfrey. It's Fifty Shades of Grey, for crying out loud. Yeah, it's just a fan fiction. And now, and now here again it rose before me, huge and bulbous, <laughs> also pulsating. <laughs> okay, Andy, who's the first uh, comic? <laughs> Untma. Oh, yes, Untma, it said. Mm. Umfana. Mm. <sighs> All righty then. So, um, <clears throat> I, I think I stopped there, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yes, I think I've traumatized enough people now. Yes. Myself. <laughs> it's like, hey, does that make me like the Kraken? <laughs> what the Kraken's good, but got free. <clears throat> oh, try a picture it saying Umfana <laughs> in that voice. Uh, anywho, I'm gonna carry on. Um, yes, yes, th- that's what I'm gonna do. 
So, like I mentioned before, the Kraken returned the uh, doll to Celestia. And uh, Celestia says, Oh, you're just trying to play mind games with me. Nah, it, it shall not work. And Luna pops in in between and saying that, Celestia, stop it. The Kraken was not the one that attacked us. It tried to save us. Uh, Luna just points out that uh, the tidal, uh, tides are converging in the seas and forming a whirlpool and whatnot. So the Kraken has been saving ponies uh, all these years from going into the, what you call this whirlpool. Uh, she's been doing it for centuries now. And... Celestia and Luna were, well, kind of saved by her. And after a few more reflections, she um, thinks to herself that uh, she spent years blaming the Kraken, uh, calling it a monster, and without thinking and taking the time to understand what really happened. And yeah, um, the Kraken saved her life and... Save her life today too. And Luna just says, That was satisfying. I'm usually the one apolog- doing the apologizing. <laughs> and uh, Luna dead. Episode over. Yay. <laughs> no, no, not really. But that eyes. Them eyes though. Um, uh, Celestia blessed the whirlpool, putting an end to the... Uh, menace of the whirlpool and freeing the kraken and claiming it to be her friends and the following day uh the kraken brought up a lot of the old uh, trinkets uh from the pendant that one of the ponies lost to a daring doodle and so on and from that day onwards uh, celestia and luna uh, good friends with the Krakens and coming in. I think I may be a bit fast, but still it works. Uh, anywho, Silver, what do you think? What are those dolls made of? What? Th- those? Seriously? Those dolls were lost over a thousand years ago, and they've been exposed to the elements of the ocean every day, 24-7. Mm-hmm. For a thousand years, those things aren't even frayed at the ends. Uh, they're they're good quality plastic, man. Or maybe good they, quality plastic. Or maybe they're made of contravian. And I sooner believe contravian. Dude, this is so. I'm just. Sorry. I'm just. What are those things made of? Oh, those are good plastic. Um, made in the good days of Hasbro when they were they weren't were tripping out on plastics. Well, then they'd be die-cast metal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Good for kids to suck on. No, don't do that. Don't do that, and also don't dump them in the ocean. That's probably toxic. <laughs> also true. I mean, that'd be great. The, the Kraken returns the dolls only to keel over from the plastic poisoning. <laughs> and so let's be like, oh, 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 my bad. My bad. Oh, no. So, there you go. You just, there, th- she has brand new trauma as a result. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, yeah, I do believe I've gone down the darkest road possible mm-hmm. now. <laughs> but, any, but uh, notice that we now get to see the Kraken from further away. And it looks, well, you can see its suction cups, it's the pattern on its head, the shape of its eyes, all hearts. This beast is all hearts. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, we, we get a first glimpse of it in the uh, whirlpool where they save the, uh, when, when it saved uh, Celestia Luna on its head, we, we see a heart, almost a heart shape. Uh, it's not fully a heart shape, but uh, we can assume that it is, and we leave. Well, most, right? most, mostly, we see sharp points. Mm-hmm. But when when we see the saving, then where that's where the change happens. Yes, and it goes, and so it goes until it's further confirmed 
Also, it has eyelashes, so I, I assume that they're trying to say the Kraken is a she. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am not what I, to assume. I'm, uh, well, you know what? I, I'm going by artistic signals. Mm-hmm. Same here. For whatever reason, guys are, do not have eyelashes in in most cartoons. That makes the whole, Which, the whole thing about Kirin a bit questionable from that one sequence. Very questionable. But, I mean, I, I this is my, the world of My Little Pony. I fully expected the Kraken to have a more benevolent uh, motive behind it. I did a little reading up on the history of the Kraken, and truth be told, Giant Octopus is only a more recent interpretation. By and large, the Kraken has at one time just been a fish as big as an island. Hmm. Heard of that before. So we're, we're dealing with some Johnny Depp ishness. But isn't Kraken something in the mid uh, 1600s or something like that? Well, it's, I believe its origins are Norse. Yeah, when they saw a giant squid. I, I think that's where it uh, originally came from. And giant squids oh, no. are real. Well, then, uh, that's how it's been reported recently. But early, early, early versions of the Kraken were indeed a fish. Hmm. In Scandinavian folklore. And. Uh, still, um. Myth- I, I don't want to say mythical because we got no idea. It's one of those things where. Have you tried looking in the ocean? <laughs> it's scary. Yes, it is. Oh boy! Wait, well, Silver. Anything more to add? I'll see here. I'm glad Fluttershy <laughs> and Celestia uh, got to get together again, and part, and so they at least didn't say they didn't leave it with Fluttershy feeling bad. Yeah, and. I just love how Celestia took the high ground and says, like, uh, you taught me a valuable lesson, Fluttershy. Uh, it, uh, it's uh, important to look for the best in others before assuming the worst. Yeah. And Fluttershy just says, yeah, yeah, whatever. These dolls are collectibles. I'm going to sell it on eBay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I looked up a little bit of my older research on the Kraken, and I just want to share this. Mm. All right. It's descended from Icelandic and Norwegian mythology under the name, and I'm going to mispronounce this terribly, Hafkufka, which is Sea Stream. It was it got its more common name in 1753, as described as being the size of an island with a mouth as wide as a fjord and teeth that are mistaken for stone cliffs. Its body does feature tentacles that are mistaken for trees. Uh. And basically it's saying, look, look, claim the body, the bounty of the sea as quick as you can, but look out if the floor starts moving. Oof. We didn't really start paying attention until 1981 with the Clash of the Titans movie, which replaced the Leviathan of the original tale. Uh... So the Kraken has enjoyed some cross-culture poll- pollination. So wait, uh, you're saying that in the olden days, it was a Leviathan instead of a Kraken. <coughs> and then somehow the Kraken took over. In in Hollywood, yes. Apparently, release the release the Kraken was better than release the Leviathan. Okay, look, drop the bass. Wiki wiki wa. <laughs> uh, you can see me popping around. Bloop 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 bloop. Oh no! <laughs> Somebody give me water. <laughs> Boys, this. So there we go. All right. That's just a little bit of mythology storytelling and history for y'all. Yay. Anything more to add? Or shall I move on to the next person? Well, let's see here. I could still always try to make this really uncomfortable. <laughs> the Kraken gave me back my childhood, and I embraced it fully. God, no. Anywho, Jacob, what about you? Well, you think after a thousand years, some pony would have complained to Celestia about the giant whirlpool off the coast that's been sinking ships, and she would have fixed it by now. Ah, man. It's one of those cases where Celestia's like, don't no, don't care, out of sight of her mind. You think? Yeah, but the way Kraken is designed, it's... 
It's all over the top. It's basically driving home that Fluttershy was right, right all along. And at this point, my inner Storm King is going off. Yeah, ponies and friendship and flowers and bang. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the lesson that Celestia learns. Does anyone else find this familiar? Look for best in others before assuming the worst. A.K.A. Uh, never judge a book by its cover. Also, Sakura is going yeah, out yeah, to the side. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <coughs> this is literally a lesson from Brown Gossip, and I should know because Sakura made her debut in there. Mm -hmm. It's funny, whenever we have a podcast, uh, our conversation is in inevitably going to mention Sakura <laughs> at least once. <laughs> yeah, but to the point, Celestia really sh didn't have to learn this lesson because she should have already known it by now unless she tossed all the Twilight's messages in the trash after reading them once. And she's got a really short term memory, which according to this comic, she shouldn't. I mean, is at the same time, uh, she's traumatized, she has a post-traumatic disorder with uh, the situation on top of whatever is going on in her life, and also the kidnapping, all of the kidnappings. <sighs> yeah. Uh, hold on, are these... Uh, are we on the end already? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we're at the end. Yeah. It's not a terribly complex comic. Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, I have to say, yeah, pretty much like what Silver said at the start, that this is the... <laughs> Rather ungraceful final huzzah for the royal sisters as they don't appear ever again. Which is mind-boggling considering that the finale, the finale of the series should have happened. I mean, in the two-part finale in the issues 101 and 102, where things go haywire, they, sh they out of all characters, they should be one who should be present. Honestly Because this is, this is the fate of Equestria. They're, uh, they're they're fighting for. Yeah, the, the whole the whole kingdom is at risk. Everybody who's important is present there. Even the worthless, useless guest setting little shit like Stygian is there, and he hardly does anything. <laughs> On honestly speaking, um, with Celestia and Luna not being at the end, or how how this comic is interpreting them, is that. I like I mentioned before, honestly, I thought there were going to be more of them in some shape or form, and I didn't mind it. But as a final hurrah for the <coughs> two of them, I I felt like it could have been better. It, it could be have been more awesomer or whatever the word you want to use is. I mean, more epic. Yeah, uh, just put it in the hands of Andy Price. And one of the good writers or great writers, and you'll get something really amazing. You know what? Just for the lulls, uh, call back Katie Cook. Yeah, she should have come at least back for the one final huzzah instead of the what's it called Cosmos arc. Yeah, she should have just done this one. Yeah, and but <laughs> I mentioned before, uh, just invite her in, uh, call her, and then like, okay. <laughs> Uh, set some rules and regulations for uh, them to work around. Uh, promote G5 if possible. And they could make it work. Yeah. I mean, the story technically isn't as bad <laughs> as anything else that Season 10 has to offer. But it's still rather mediocre, if I'm honest. And it probably comes down from having high expectations of the story. And again, you're a Moten Joe on. Mediocre. <laughs> yeah, and I understand how you guys are feeling because as the final hurrah, there should have been more things, more epic, more stuff. But this is not bad. Like, on its own, as a story, it's good. I, I don't mind it. It's interesting. But for a final, that was rather lackluster. Agreed. Well, uh, oh well. Um, I I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But anywho, uh, anything more to uh, sorry, anything else to add? Nah, I'm good. All right then. As for me, Ev oh. <laughs> yes, Silver. No, please. No. Every time Celestia went to visit the Kraken from then on, things got wet. 
Uh, yeah, they they jump into the ocean. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, for me, uh, this comic is a rather nice slice of life comic. I, I do like the idea that Celestia has some kind of baggage. But what I don't like is that the baggage is easily solvable if Celestia just visited the place often and like just talk to the folks over there. I, I don't know. It, it's, it feels like things could have been easily solved. You know what I mean? Yeah. But eh, I, I guess that's about it then. I mean, uh, nothing more to add. <clears throat> so anywho let's wrap things up if you guys have any questions concerns, or suggestions for the show you can contact us at dimensiongmail.com you can also reach us on the twitter so show's twitter account is at the Mia show and my personal twitter account is at Norman Sanzo uh, Silver where can the good people find you? oh you can find me in many places you can find me on twitter DeviantArt and youtube under MLP Silver Quill uh, you can do a search for After the Fact and uh, Silver Quill and you shall find me if you do just after the fact, you'll find a relevant news uh, organization, but I'm not a part of that. Ooh, that sucks. Well, I can't. I, I guess I can't compete with them on the branding. Uh, they got money. But Grr. even though I was here first, I know. they bought it from you. Grr. <laughs> oh, they bought nothing. They took it. I've been robbed. Yeah, they, they, they robbed. They, I say they buy the AdSense and whatnot. So they're putting them on the top, but no, we we know who's the original is. So you know now I need to like do a bunch of Gilbert Godfrey reading impersonations to get capital to sue them. I don't think you need to sue them, Silver. I mean, just the Gilbert Godfrey impression <laughs> reading would let you go, my friend. So, uh, yeah, basically, you can help support my my fi- my legal campaign on Patreon. <laughs> Or Kofi. <laughs> Again, just look for MLP Silver Quill. Yep, uh, look for him there, but I doubt that he'll be using it for legal battles. Uh, also, um, remember here, you guys, folks, sorry, remember, folks, um, nag to Silver about the Gilbert Goffrey reading. Do a fanfic reading, yay. Put it as a Patreon tier or something like that. <laughs> yay. <laughs> but anywho, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Take a wicked. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Take a wicked. <laughs> Good people find you. Well, you can find me on the Deviant Art uh, under the username Yaka von Torkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading story te- uh, Turmoil Rising, you can find it on Finfiction.net under the username JFT. And if you're interested in reading a, a, an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, go check it out, guys. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on www.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcast, exclusive, and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank... Oh no, I have not brought the script up, but let me see if I can do it by memory. Uh, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, uh, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. Yay, I did it from memory. You guys are awesome. Woohoo! So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Silver Quail. <laughs> or Iago. Oh. I've been Jacob. Uh, we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the MBS show. <laughs> See ya. I'm not re- I'm Those doing- tentacles, may they grasp you firmly in their warm <laughs> embrace. Warm. <laughs> I'm really not looking forward to the next one now. <laughs> As you shouldn't. <laughs> what have I created? Oh god. A kraken. You did this, Norman. Years from now you shall be damned. Nah man. Cursed by the legacy. Nah man, everybody's gonna enjoy it. Yeah yeah. <laughs>
Oh, they'll enjoy it at first, but then, like, he never stopped. He just never stopped. Yeah, Norman, just wait until you get ass assaulted by dog puns next time. Oh, God. Still, it'll be great.